content. Um, the biggest present I could ask for is if you guys would go leave a review, share the podcast, spread the word. That's what helps us grow. That what That's what helps us make an impact over here at Solarpreneur. So it would be much appreciated. If you have not done those things, please go out and spread the word. Leave us a review. That's all we ask. That's all I ask. Okay. And speaking of reviews, we did have a few new ones I wanted to feature on the show. So I wanted to give a quick thank you. Our most recent review was from Bill Solar Pro. And Bill is a friend of mine, actually hopped on a call with him. Um, we've known each other for a little bit, connected through the podcast, actually. And uh, he said, like a trusted friend, five stars. This positive review is long overdue. I've been listening to Solarpreneur for years now as the best use of my commute, and it has helped me immensely. Taylor has such a chill style and is a skilled interviewer, able to bring together talented players from the industry and able to ask the right questions from guests to bring out golden nuggets to share with all of us with great wisdom and experience. I'm super impressed how he has time to be successful in solar while also running this successful podcast at the same time to help all of us. He seems generally passionate about helping others and spreading the good word. And I, for one, have gained so much from his podcasts. Thank you so much, Bill, brother. Appreciate it. And uh, keep crushing your solar in Hawaii. Um, and shout out if you need a plug for solar in Hawaii, hit bill up or hit me up, I should say, and I'll connect you with them. And then our second review, uh, shout out to EJ Hernandez. This is, a uh, on a, on a negative note. Okay. <laughs> he left us a one star review. So I apologize EJ that we're not living up to your expectations, but the only thing he said is monotone and, uh, much. So EJ, I'm sorry we failed your expectations. Hey, okay. and um, I know I can be a little monotone sometimes, so <laughs> I try to keep it a little animated. And uh, unfortunately, I've just had a monotone voice probably my whole life. I do everything I can to, um, you know, not be super monotone. But hey, we're getting there. Probably should do some voice coaching or something. So EJ, hopefully. That is uh, not relating to the value of the podcast because I believe we are sharing the best, the latest, the greatest tricks and tips for solar cells. So I hope you'll give us a shot, but I'm sorry that uh, apparently I'm too monotone. <laughs> okay, but come on now. One star review. Can you at least give us like three stars and uh, say, hey, work on your work on not being so monotone. <laughs> but OK, it is what it is. Haters going to hate. Right. All right. So anyways, enough about reviews. Let's jump into the topic of the show. And that is how can we be more effective when we are calling people on the phone for solar? And I think it's a skill that isn't talked about very often. Um, I don't think I've ever really heard this brought up in any like door to door training. I've been in the industry eight years on mostly door to door teams. And I can't remember ever doing a training about how we should call people. Hey, okay, but um, recently had a guest on who you're going to hear from on the next episode coming up. His name is Peter Roth. He works with age leads, which are just leads that's, um, you know, at some point they responded to an ad. At some point they showed interest and we have a name and a phone number for these people. So he's all about collecting these lists of age leads and then setting up call centers, calling these people. Okay, and so I'll admit a lot of people... Um, myself, I have not done age leads per se. And, um, some of us, maybe we're not really planning on calling like lists of leads or anything like that, but I think there is still, um, training needed on how we can be more effective when we call, because we're all, even if we're doing purely door to door working referrals, whatever, there's going to be many times when we're making phone calls and maybe we're calling a, uh, somewhat colder referral or just a cold lead, right? We need to know how to be effective. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few things, a um, few ways you can be more effective when you are making these calls. And I'll preface it by saying I'm not an expert on this, okay? I am mostly a door-to-door -door guy, but I have picked up a few things, especially as I've interviewed people that are experts that I think help tremendously. And a few tweaks myself, the most calling I do personally is uh, calling referrals personally. Um, so 
yeah, here's a few things I learned. Okay, I'm going to give you guys three things. Okay, but the story on this was um, I started to increase my referrals, right? Over the last few years, I've been dialing in my process more and more to get more referrals from um, people I sign when I knock on their doors, right? And um, I realized I was getting these long lists of leads and then I was just not calling them. Okay, so they just sat there for a long time. But then when I was calling them, the problem was uh, people weren't answering. I would get discouraged. And then when I would do these sessions, I just realized it was taking a lot of time to actually call these people. Right. It's like I had them all scattered all over the place. These notebooks, these papers of referrals. And so it was super disorganized. And then number two, it just took a long time. I would have to like, OK, figure out, oh, where's this phone number written down? OK, let me type it in. Oh, you know what? I mistyped that number, retype it in. And then just probably like 30 seconds, maybe even up to a minute sometimes between calls because I would have to figure out where I was doing. And that may that may not sound like a ton, but if you add up um, however many calls you're making, if you're making, let's say, 50 calls and you've got a minute between each of these calls, um, you know, including breaks, maybe that's 50 minutes of extra time you just added in there because you had to check your notes, you had to figure out the right phone number. So how can we be more effective? So these are some steps that I made right off the bat that helped me be way more effective, speed things up. Okay, and so the first one is this, going directly off that point, is have some type of dialer or CRM. Okay, and so um, if you're new to this, a dialer, that's what like you think of these call centers, you know, the Filipinos on head headsets or, you know, different countries, they have the headsets. I know there's American call centers too, but pretty popular to start offshore call centers. Okay, so you think of them, they got their headsets on. They're not just hooking it up to their iPhone. They have a dialer software. Okay, so it's a, basically a software that just makes it automatic, has all your phone numbers, and boom, 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 boom. At the very least, it's calling them all automatically. There's no time between calls. It's just cranking them off one by one. Okay, and there's a few different types of dialers. You can Google it. Um, if you Google top dialers for sales, it's going to show you all that stuff. Um, so you can pick one, you can do it. If you're calling lots of leads, great way to handle it right there. But I would recommend the very simple solution I have is you can use software called High Level. A lot of people are familiar with it in Solar now. I've talked about it on the podcast, but it's just a CRM, right? You have all your leads plugged in there and you can use it also as a dialer. Okay, so it has a feature where you can just have an entire list that it'll go through and just crank them out automatically. If you are making calls, get some type of CRM, get some type of dialer because you just want it to be more efficient and you will get burned out if you're just using your regular iPhone and making a high volume of calls. Okay, if you hardly ever call, um, if you're just, you know, calling every once in a while, or referral, whatever, then you don't have to worry about this as much, but I would say start getting better at referrals and collecting more leads like that, more names and numbers from people. And hopefully you can get your referrer to actually introduce you through a three-way text. But if not, um, then you got to be calling them. Number two is follow some type of script. We all have scripts for knocking on doors, for closing, at least we should. We should not be winging it. So why do so many of us wing it when it comes to calling um, referrals when it comes to calling leads, when it comes to calling past appointments that ghosted us, we should have a separate script for all these situations. And even if you are experienced, even if you're like, Oh, Taylor, I don't need a script. I can just call people love me, whatever. What about for all your new guys, you give a script to all your new guys when they're knocking doors. Why don't you have some type of script for calling people on the phone for different situations? And I noticed myself, I felt like I was experienced. I felt like I would have good conversations when I started doing these things. But um, as I would listen back to these calls, which that's another cool thing about using a software like High Level, is it will actually record the calls. So you can go back, you can listen, conversation, analyze what happened. 
But I was really realizing that every call I was like saying different things. Sometimes I was getting confused. Sometimes they bring up some objections on the phone. Sometimes your mind can go blank too. So it helps to just have like a script to know where you're leading the conversation. And just like a framework, fossil framework, if you need help with that, hit me up. We can help. Um, or we do have coaching options. Okay, little plug. <laughs> okay, but hit me up. This is what we help with. Okay, and then last but not least, number three in all this is make sure you just act like you're having a conversation with a real person. This was another thing I realized when I went back listen and listened to a lot of these recordings. At the door, you know, I'm seeing body language when I'm knocking a door. I see how the customer's uh, acting, I'm mirroring them. If they're, you know, grandma, happy, excited, whatever, I'm trying to be the same way. Um, and so on the phone, this is a little bit tougher. You don't see their body language. Okay? And I guess going back to the review, I got that podcast is too monotone. That's how I was sounding in these calls. So I realized that I need to like stand up. I need to have a smile on my face. That's maybe uh, EJ, the person that left us a one star. Maybe I was doing a podcast like, I don't know, sitting down or laying down. Sometimes I do do podcasts sitting down. But uh, yeah, they probably come out more monotone. I know they do come out a little more monotone than if I'm standing up. So that's why if you watch any of the videos of the podcast, usually I try to stand up because I'm getting more, I would say more oxygen, just easier to be a little more animated. You're awake, right? A lot, tough, a lot easier to fall asleep in the chair. Okay, so it definitely helps if you can stand up. Okay, and again, I'm no expert in these, but these are some basic things that you all should be doing when you're making calls. Um, again, we have Peter Roth coming on that is a master in setting up call centers, um, in um, using age leads to get more business. So make sure you tune into that to learn more about that topic. I don't think we've had any anyone on the podcast talking about those things. So tune into that one. And then just to review today, number one, it's use some type of CRM, pick a dialer. If you are making um, high volume of calls at all, then you need some type of dialer. Number two, follow a script. And number three, don't fall asleep on the calls. Hey, you're talking to a person. So stand up, smile, whatever you got to do. I hope that helps you today. I hope you have an awesome week and close lots of deals and grow your solar business. We will see you on the next episode. Peace.